I think we should bring back for a limited time being a hater. All right, so today we have a different kind of video that I haven't really done before. It's nothing groundbreaking, don't get too excited. But basically, Ian, Ashlyn's husband, they do booktube videos, love them. I think they're super sweet and adorable and I love watching their videos. Ian recently posted a video talking about 10 difficult books that he wants to read. And I, that kind of like, I was watching it and I was just kind of thinking like, I kind of want to talk about books that I will never read for one reason or another. And I, like, not just me hearing the synopsis and being like, oh no, I'm not interested in that because that happens a lot. But like full on, I have reasons <laughs> for why I do not want to read that book. So I'm going to be a professional hater for like 10 minutes and we're just going to talk about the books that I don't want to read. And I do want to put a little disclaimer on this that I'm not the pinnacle of book taste, if you will. I'm not sitting here saying that my opinion is right and everyone else is wrong. And I'm not saying that these books are terrible because I haven't read them. And the books, the reasoning is not that I think, well, one of them is that, there's, that I've heard it's not good, but the majority of it is not that I think it's going to be a bad book. Like I have my own reasons. You'll see, you'll see. But all that to say, if you have read any of these books and you like them, please kindly <laughs> tell me in the comments what I am wrong about and whether or not I should read it. So all of that to say, the first one that I want to talk about that I have zero that I that I do not want to read is House of Leaves. Now no one come for me because this is a very huge like cult classic book. Um, the people who love this book are obsessed with this book because it has a lot of layers to it. So essentially you have a fate and like I'm trying to figure out how to describe it. So you have a book that is essentially a puzzle. So, and I'm not talking like how trust was like a literary puzzle, legitimately a puzzle. Like you can go through the book and read just the annotations and then you go through and you can read it backwards or something, or there's like parts where it's backwards and you can read it from the very beginning to the very end. And basically you get a different kind of story each time if I'm understanding correctly or you at least get like new layers and stuff to the book and essentially what the book is about which is the reason why I don't want to read it like I don't want to not read this book because I think it would be complicated I think that the whole like if I could figure out the whole puzzle of it I think this is a really cool concept for a book but the whole premise of the book is that it's about a family's experience in a house. So like you have a manuscript of a family and their experience living in this strange house. And then, but there's like a bunch of like twisty, turny, very creepy things. And I think that this book would freak me out way too much. Like I've heard that it is scary and cor this is one of those situations, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard that this is like a scary book. And the reason why, the main reason why I don't want to read it is because apparently in this book or in this house, you can get trapped inside of it, essentially. Like you think you're opening up a door into the hallway and it like reroutes you and like leads you somewhere else. Like you are trapped in this house. You can't get rid of it. Like you can't get out. There's no way to get out. And that is honestly one of my biggest fears. <laughs> and I know that is going to sound so juvenile and dumb, but being trapped inside of a haunted house that I can't get out of. And I keep thinking that I'm opening up the front door and I'm being led like into a creepy basement or like what this reminds me of is this movie with Kevin Bacon and Amanda Seyfried and they're in this haunted house and it's the same thing. Like you think you're going into the living room and then you're in this creepy bedroom or you open up the door into a hallway and you're in this basement 
from forever ago that's like really insanely creepy and scary or there was this part where they tried to leave the house and him and his daughter were walking for hours and then they just got looped right back around to the house like that's terrifying to me and so that's why I don't want to read this book because that's one of my biggest fears I think it stems from I think it's in Old Town San Diego I want to say I might be completely wrong but there was this house my mom used to tell us about growing up where this woman was like a medium or something or thought she was a medium and so she built this house for the ghosts so like you think you're going up the stairs or something and you open up the door and it's just empty space it's the side of the house or like you are like windows open to like a wall like really creepy mazy things I don't like that I don't like that and that's why I don't want to read that book call me childish but that's that's one of the reasons next is La Pavana by Odessa Moshbeg and this one and the next one kind of go hand in hand for me so La Pavana, I read Death in Her Hands by Odessa Moshbeg and I want to read all of her other books. Really want to read my year of rest and relaxation. Really want to get to um, Eileen. Really want to read those books. But the reason why I don't want to read La Juana is because I heard that it is a very bodily book. Um, I know it's supposed to be satire for like the Trump's America and like all of that stuff. And I understand that. And I think that's very, very smart. And I think that the setting that she decided to do this in was very smart. But I heard that it is very like bodily abusive and not just like domestic violence, but like it's a very um, like grossly descriptive bodily book. And I do not do well with like body horror stuff. Um, I hate it. I will not read a book if it has it in it, which is why I don't want to read The Troop. So Paperback Dreams, I really need her to come back to YouTube because I loved her channel. She, uh, I'm so glad that she read this book and talked about it so that I knew never to read it. But essentially, I think this one is like a Boy Scout troop gets stuck or stranded in an area and I think like a parasite, like comes and starts infecting them and making them act like crazy and gross and this one she said has a lot a lot a lot of body horror in it and so I am going to stay so far away from that this has also made me kind of not want to read the Gloria but for some reason I am kind of okay with reading that because I heard that that one is a, also a very a bodily book if that makes any sense that one set in a dystopian society where we have a matriarch and she basically has bred this entire col uh, colony and it's all like a very incestuous type thing and for some reason I think the review that I heard of that book makes me kind of be like oh that might be interesting but she kept saying that it is a very bodily abuse and I keep saying that word but I don't really know how else to describe it like it is very very descriptive of bodily harm and harm done to other people and to themselves and like I just don't want anything to do with that like I want it to stay so far away from me I like don't want to read that it makes me feel so icky like it makes me feel I'm like and the thing is is that if I don't read to feel freaked out like I know that a lot of people read to feel freaked out and if I'm in a very specific mood like I love Stephen King I will read his stuff I will read that I'll read you know other books of that nature but if it's like at a level where I'm so insanely freaked out, I don't want to do it. Like that is not why I personally read. That is or not like I read to feel relaxed and get out of this, you know, crazy shit show we call Earth. You know, I'm not reading to be freaked out in the words of Taylor Swift. I hate it here. Like I don't want to be reading things that are crazy, which actually depending on my mood, I will. But I just I don't know. I can't get with it. So um the last one, I think this might be a short video. I think I need to talk about books that I do want to read to kind of break up the, the hateritis that 
I sounded like Jack Edwards just then. So the last one is actually kind of funny because I was texting one of my best friends about this last night because we were watching Bridgerton. And I love that show. Like a spoon changes her life. And all our lives. <laughs> When it's time in between seasons, I'm like, oh yeah, that show's pretty good. Like, I really liked it, but every time that show comes back on, I'm like, I'm in love with this. I love the music. I love the costumes. I love the declarations of love. I'm like, I am eating this shit up, like eating it up. But I do not want to read the books, partially because when the first season came out, uh, I can't remember her name, but I'll put a screen grab of it of it up right here. She was basically making a YouTube video talking about how the books are not always better than the show. And so she went through every single Bridgerton book and kind of broke it down and explained it. <laughs> and, and I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound mean, but like talked about how like the writing is not good. And like the storyline isn't really that good sometimes either, but like the show has done a really good job of making it very interesting I think at least it's like we still have like seven more to go or something there's so many siblings she like talked about it and it was such a comical video to watch I would highly recommend watching it but and I normally am a very big I have to read the book before I see the movie or the show the only one that I gave up on was Dune because that just wasn't happening let's be realistic and it was uh, not on my radar as a book series, I don't think. And then I found out it was a book series and then I heard about how <laughs> the books were crap. And so I just don't want to waste my time reading nine books that I don't think are going to be good. Like, I just don't. So sorry for being negative for like the last like seven minutes or however, however long I've been talking. But to kind of talk about, to kind of break it up, and talk about books that I do want to read. The first one is Shiggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. Mayfly's Bow by O'Hagan Andrew. Headshot, Rita Bullwinkle, Faye Bound, Sarah El Arifi. I think I pronounced that right. Uh, I really want to read Seating Arrangements by Maggie Shipstead, Our Wives Under the Sea by Julie Armfeld. And I kind of randomly want to read um, books by Paige Toon. I have no idea who that is. I saw some of her like covers on like a, someone's Pinterest and I was like, oh, these seem like, you know, good summer romance books. If they are, let me know. I have never really heard anything about her and I haven't read anything by her obviously, but she's kind of on my radar. So all of that to say, that was me being um, extremely negative for the last five minutes and slightly positive at the end. I think it's fun. I think we should kind of, I think we should bring back talking about things you don't want to do. I think we should bring back for a limited time being a hater on the internet. I think that within the right confines, being a hater can be fun sometimes. So that's that. Leave comments below about if you really think I should read House of Leaves. Tell me it's not that creepy. And don't even bother with the other two because I'm not reading it. I don't want to read about like parasites underneath skin and well, no no i will see you guys next time for our june tbr video and i hope you guys have a great week